take my chosen career path or lifestyle lightly. For in it, I find a platform that most people have a difficult time discussing, which is their health and well-being. I find myself strategically positioned in a place to be able to build up and motivate um, individuals to their highest potential or to achieving their highest potential, while at the same time keep them from falling into a cycle of hopelessness or giving up on what they desire for their life, for their well-being, and for their health. I work with individuals in the classroom, uh, in wellness centers and hospitals, uh, as well as in the community. And one of the things that hasn't changed is the need for complete wellness, or what we know as complete wellness, holistic health. Um, this is where we encompass our entire well-being, body, mind, and spirit. This is the time, when, when you're in a community, you get an opportunity to see, um, when you're in a relationship with individuals, you get an opportunity uh, to see their frustrations and their hurts about wanting to um, improve their lifestyle or improve their well-being, but feeling like there's nothing they can do about it. Um, especially in the case of believers, um, because we have such a higher incentive when, it, when we talk about our well-being. We have uh, a great incentive, I would say, which is being the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us and that is with us. Complete wellness is conscious. It's an evolving process of achieving our full potential. It's multidimensional and it's holistic. It includes our lifestyle, our mind or mental capacity, as well as our spiritual well-being. Um, one of the things that we're going to do today is we're just going to look at our physical well-being and we're going to see the role that it plays um, and then the connection that it makes to other aspects of our well-being. Um, recognizing your physical well-being and your state, where you currently are, um, becomes very important and essential as we travel throughout this journey today. So come along, join me. Hopefully you'll have a good time. If not, watch it anyway. Recognition, motivation, and action are three important concepts um, that we have to maintain or begin to assess in order to improve our well-being or to even see that there's a need for improvement in our physical well-being. It's the best starting point. Recognize your current state. Recognize where you desire to be. And then recognize who would be essential in helping you get to that place you desire to be. Then using those choices as motivation to propel you into action. To bring a little understanding to these concepts, I would like to read a familiar story to you, the prodigal son, out of the Message Bible. It says, there was once a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bag and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. So in the son's current state of being, the father provided him a portion of his wealth, or wella. Wella is defined as a sound, healthy, prosperous state. It refers to well-being. In other words, he provided him a deed to a foundation strong enough to build a future upon. However, the next time we witnessed the son, he wasted all of his well-being on wild and impulsive living. He went away full and now he's depleted. The greatest aspect of this story lies in this fact. The father is concerned about your well-being, your complete well-being, not just the spiritual aspect. He takes great interest in you. He gave it to you. He made you. He gave you life, breath, and all things. Why wouldn't he be concerned about you? Are you interested in knowing how this happens in real life situations? It's called doing nothing, and it's harmful. How often do we think about the things we are not doing as opposition to performing our best or giving our greatest effort? Doing nothing is always fun initially. It's easy, and who doesn't like easy? In the end, however, it's what we don't do that becomes the catalyst for bad habits and destructive behaviors and poor quality of years lived. <music> If you knew you had the DNA of Superman, would you fly? You? You have more benefits, a greater incentive. You have God's spirit living in you. 
Stop saying what you can't do to improve your health and well-being. You already have everything you need. Live like it. Go ahead. I dare you. Fly. lifestyle we choose to adopt, those things that work best for you, um, those things that you enjoy doing. No antidotes, just a lifetime discovery of what works best for you, the things you enjoy doing. Improving your well-being requires some training. It's placing a gradual load over a period of time on your body, regardless of what that load may be. So it can be a cardiovascular load, it can be a muscular strength or endurance load. It can be flexibility. Um, you want to at least target one of the areas of your health-related um, areas of physical fitness. Um, flexibility is a part of that, as well as body composition. Um, one of the things that you'll find when you're trying to improve your load is that it takes time. It's a gradual process. So you want to initially find out what works for you. For some of us, we're participating in a Zumba program right now. Um, Zumba is to help improve your cardiovascular fitness. It's something people enjoy. It's dancing. It's having a good time. It's a lot of clapping. It's some yelling. Um, but it, it allows people to enjoy um, the cardiovascular fitness that they're doing. You have to find what works best for you. If you're not one that likes to participate in group fitness classes, maybe you're one who can work out during the commercial breaks of your favorite TV show. Whatever it is, you want to try to improve not just one, but you want to improve all five components um, of your physical fitness assessment. And what do I mean by that? In Zumba, uh, we not only do cardiovascular fitness, but prior um, to the class, we do body composition. So we allow people to get those baseline assessments of where they are. We also do flexibility, so they know where to start and then they know where they want to progress to. These are the same actions that we all have to take when we're thinking about improving your physical activity is to enable you to uh, have the endurance and the strength and the stamina to be able to carry out your activities of daily living, whether it be at your job, um, as a spouse, a husband or a wife, um, whether it's a mother or a father, taking your kids to and from practice, um, completing all the, the daily tasks that you may have for a day in your home um, or around your community, uh, even in the ministry, and then having something left over at the end of the day. Where that's what training pretty much does for us. Uh, that's what improving our endurance, improving our strength, improving our flexibility, and even our body composition. Those are the things it does. See, I've grown up as a sprinter, and we always desire to complete the race with speed, with power, and as quickly as possible. But as a believer, we have to begin to maintain an endurance type of mentality, to know that our main desire is to complete this course with joy, complete this journey having done all that God created us for and created us to do. However, many of us finish the race defeated, out of shape, and barely crossing the finish line with the baton of faith. It's now time. It's time to make a commitment to recognize your current state. See where you are and do what you can do to improve. Let life be your motivation. We must recognize the attitude we hold toward physical well-being. It determines how we'll compete physically and how we'll carry out the work spiritually. Determined to live life well. Thanks for joining me.